up, my wizards? It's Dev back again from Strictly Better. We got some more spoilers, as usual. Last night, we got like nine more of these to go through, and these, interesting, in that a lot of them are somewhat standard viable, uh, more so than what we've seen yesterday. With the Megamorphs, we got um, a lot of limited stuff, and uh, yeah, they threw us a bone with Narsa yesterday, but this, today, a lot of really cool stuff, so let's run through some of these real fast. First guy I want to talk about is Dragon Lord Dramoka, my favorite flavor milkshake. Uh, and this guy, pretty cool. Um, some say, and I've, I'm among them, that he's a little high cost, honestly. Uh, six mana is a bit much. Uh, seven toughness is kind of cool. And, you know, a lot of people have been going around the last few days saying, like, oh, a blue white control is going to totally be a thing. A Jutai's Command got spoiled, and like I said, Narset got spoiled. People have been getting hyped for uh, blue white control. And this kind of shuts that down a little bit. He can't be countered, and they can't cast spells on your turn. Of course, they can still, like, murderous cut him or remove him somehow here as downfall uh, during their turn. That's a thing. I definitely think that he has a place in standard, maybe um, a sideboard thing. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe like a one or two of in main decks. I, I, all in all, I kind of like Dramoka. He's He might be my favorite Dragon Lord spoiled so far, though. Kuligan's pretty cool, too. I'm gonna go ahead and say that he, right now, from what we know, is a seven and a quarter in standard. Um, he probably will be played against Control, and Control is definitely a thing. One of the top two or three decks in standard right now. So I think we will see Dramoka. Second on our list right here is Ojutai Exemplars. I've been really thinking about this card. Um, four mana is steep-ish for the decks that would want to play something like this. Um, however, it does protect itself. That's an important thing. In the same way, some ways that Aetherling did, although you have to have uh, card fuel for this, where you didn't really for Aetherling. You just had to pump mana into it. Um, so that's a consideration. Gaining first strike in lifelink is pretty hot, and in aggro decks, tapping a creature is not a bad ability. Um, just being able to get through. It's basically target creature can't block this turn. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's really a kind of a tough call. 4-4 uh, four, four for 4 mana that can do cool things. Sounds good, but honestly, if, with the protect himself ability, yeah, uh, I, I could get behind this, um, but at the same time, I'm really very ambivalent about this card. As you can tell, I, I'm wrestling with it. Right now, I think he's a, a solid seven and a half, a little, a little better maybe than Dramoka just because he protects himself so well. Third thing I want to talk about, let's talk about Anticipate. A couple of thoughts and on Anticipate. This is, uh, at first glance, um, and subsequent glances, a very good uh, draw spell. Uh, looking at the top three, sort of a almost a mini dig through time for just two mana is pretty good. It's it's actually impulse, uh, the same cost, but you get to look at one fewer cards. Um, so that sounds good. <laughs> I don't know, however, in standard my beef with it is that I don't know that it takes the place of either dig through time or um, treasure cruise. Both of those cards are very good and see an awful lot of play, especially treasure cruise lately, and. Anticipate, I don't know, really uh, cuts the mustard when compared to those other two cards. Uh, however, I think that once Anticipate gets a chance to shine and those other cards rotate out, that it will be um, a played card, um, depending on whether or not we see Serum Visions. I think that Serum Visions might pop up here either in this set or Magic Origins, and that would be friggin' sweet if that happened. So right now, I'll go ahead and give Anticipate a 7 flat. Just a flat seven, and I know it's probably a little better than that, but it won't get a chance to be um, the card that it is until maybe a year or so from now. Now, let's talk about a, probably one of the worst cards on the list <laughs> that was spoiled. Um, Risen Executioner, and this guy's taking a lot of flack. Um, sort of, he's going to be the bulk mythic of the sets. I saw somebody say that. And... Um, this is another thing, I hate to keep harping on it, but a couple people have also said, like, maybe post-rotation, we don't know what kind of zombies we's gonna have, and, um, you know, yeah, maybe, but at, at the same time, I really don't see him being much. I don't even really like this guy in Sealed that much, let me be honest. Uh, he's efficiently costed, and you can probably bring him back for four, five, six most of the time, but he can't block. I hate creatures that can't block in Sealed and Limited, because um, that's, you know, 30%, 40% even of the game. Um, 
So in combat is 90% of the game in limited. So I don't I don't know how much I like Risen Executioner either. I'm I'm pretty cold on this guy. Um, maybe if we see more zombie-ish, a little of uh, wild down the line. But right now Risen Executioner about a six and a quarter. I would say he really isn't too impressive and not on the radar. Here's a cool guy, a uh, Zergo Bell Striker. It's like the names in this set are killing me. Zergo Bell Striker. Um, Aside from the dumb name, he is a really good card. He's got uh, a whole two toughness, by the way, for the one mana. Two power, two toughness, one mana. You don't, really don't see that every day. Um, and he can sort of block. Usually these red creatures and the black creatures that are one, uh, one casting cost and two power can't block. Uh, this guy can to an extent. <laughs> he can't block anything with power greater than two. Um, two or greater, I think it is. That being said, he's a one mana, two, two in a set that like, or in a, a color that really needs that. Um, this is a fantastic one drop for, for red, the sort of budget mono red aggro that we see going around. This is wonderful for that. And it'll get a lot more play than a lot of the cards that have gotten spoiled so far uh, in more than one deck. Um, so I'm gonna give him um, a straight up eight and a quarter, I'll say on this guy, just because he will see so much play. You'll be in lists, guaranteed. Number six on our list is Shakiri Raptor. Um, that's a hell of a name. Shakira Raptor. A lot of people are comparing him favorably to Witch Stalker from a couple of years ago, a card a lot of people like, myself included. And uh, I, I also, on the other hand, think that people are overrating this card a bit. Um, I don't know how relevant the Megamorph is at all. And, and, and I'm not entirely convinced that the whenever one of your things is turned face up he comes back i i think that's relevant because he anything that can bring itself back in the graveyard is usually a relevant creature especially if it just comes straight back to play but i'm not entirely sure how relevant morph and manifest and all that is going to end up being let me know if maybe i'm missing something um in the comments i, I feel like this card people are giving it a lot of love and maybe i'm just not seeing it. Maybe I've overlooked something, so let me know. Um, I'm going to give Raptor a flat 7. Now, of course, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. The Death Touch is pretty nice. He can recur himself. You know, all these things are good, but I don't want to get... It's one of those cards I feel like people will get overhyped on and won't see all the play, but I could totally be wrong. This guy I like, <laughs> by the way. This is uh, Erishin Foremost. Yeah, kind of the Silver Blade Paladin of this set. And I've actually seen a couple of people trashing this guy. Uh, I love cards like this. The three mana, two, two, double strike that gives other things double strike. I feel like this is relevant all day. Um, sure, it can only give other warriors first strike, but this helps out that Black White Warriors deck like crazy you know you play your three two chief second turn then this guy comes down third turn and they have a lot to to deal with right there what is that six ten that's ten eleven twelve damage something like that on the board uh, in two creatures so yeah um i actually think that foremost is not in any way bad <laughs> like I said, people are cold mostly because it has to be a warrior that he enables double strike to, but plenty of targets. Um, you know, it seems like every other creature in the last couple sets is a warrior, so there is no lack of good targets for this card, and I think he's very solid. I'm going to give him a seven and a quarter on this guy. Um, I think that he'll see standard play, but in a niche kind of way, but he'll be there. He'll be at the party. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and talk about Atarka's Command. Um, the second command we've had spoiled, so we will get a cycle of these. And this one only costs two mana instead of the four, so they could all theoretically cost different mana. I think two is definitely, since we're dealing with allied colors, the minimum cost. And um, the modes on this aren't incredibly impressive at first glance. This is a pretty decent card in limited environments, but... In standard, I think that you can just play a land from your hand thing. I think that's the most interesting mode on the card, especially considering it's instant speed. You can play lands on your opponent's turn. You can play lands during combat, which I don't think... I've been playing Magic for 20 years, and I don't know that I've ever played a land during combat. Um, so that's <laughs> kind of interesting. Um, there's probably some landfall stuff. It's hard to judge this card at first glance. Three damage to each opponent for two mana is cool. That's a good mode. Play a land from your hand. Seems decent, um, but you're... You know, you have to have a land in your hand, <laughs> obviously. The creatures you control get plus one, plus one in reach. I don't know if that's strictly a limited ability, 
or not. I think we're seeing a good green-red deck shape up here, but that could be a red herring, I'm not sure. Pun maybe intended. So I'm gonna go ahead and give a Tarka's Command a uh, six and three quarters, uh, relatively. I mean, that's still a playable score, no doubt, but I'm just not entirely sold on all the modes of this card. Being able to do two things for two mana at instant speed, though, is always going to be good, so this card will do things. And finally, for this today's spoilers, let's talk about um, Scale Guard Sentinels. This card looks good, um, spe speaking of green-red aggro. Um, yeah, two mana for a two three, possibly two mana for a three four is busted. I was going to use the word busted. Um, probably is, to be honest. Um, this is reminiscent of, I think it was Ren's Run Vanquisher, um, which I didn't see as much play as everyone thought it was going to during spoiler season. Still saw play. Don't get me wrong, still saw play, and it sees play in modern now. But um, Sentinels is not quite that. Um, we'll see dragons. We'll see dragons in standard. That's, that's pretty much a given. Um, but how relevant that I can be a 3-4 type ability is going to be really is up to how the decks shape up. And we've got a lot of set to go. We've, I think we've only spoiled about an eighth of the set so far, so we've got a lot of set to go to see how things shape up. Although things are pretty darn exciting so far, honestly. They've been, they've been spoiling really cool stuff. Sentinels, let's go ahead and give it a score of seven and a quarter because I do believe it'll see play. It's just far too efficiently costed um, to not be played around with. It will definitely be brewed with. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about Sentinels. I think it's kind of cool. We'll, we'll see what happens though. I'm not, I keep saying this, I'm not entirely sold, but this will see standard play, definitely. Well, I think that's it for today, guys. I'm Dev from Strictly Better MTG. Subscribe because we'll be doing more of these spoilers. There's going to be more coming down the pipeline early tonight, and we'll try to get a video up as soon as possible. I should say late tonight, like 2 in the morning. So, uh, yeah, subscribe to us, and then you'll get an email like, hey, we had Strictly Better MTG put up a new video. You should watch that. And then you will, and you'll be, like, super happy about it. So, yeah, do that. I'm Dev from that, SBMTG. I'll see you guys later.